Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Today's video is going to be about first stage, regulator first stage. How does a regulator first stage get clogged? Can it get clogged? Well, I'm going to show you it can and it has. This regulator has been clogged and has stopped the air to the diver. Stay tuned. We're going to get started real soon. I just want to make it nice and clear. This has nothing to do with the brand or the model or the diver of this particular regulator. It has everything to do with the tank the diver was using. This is going to be really interesting. The customer's complaint during his dive, he noticed that his regulator was getting harder to breathe. Also noticed that his pressure gauge was dropping drastically. These first stages are balanced first stages. They're designed to breathe the same, consistent throughout the dive. If you notice that your regulator is starting to get harder to breathe, you either have one, an unbalanced first stage, or something is going on inside your regulator. Anyway, customer aborted the dive, came back to the boat, decided to bring me the regulator for inspection. I inspected it and also noticed that there was a drastic drop in the IP pressure as I was working and pressuring the purge button. So I decided to open up the regulator. Let me show you what I found. Okay, let's open this up and let me show you what I found. First, I'm gonna remove the inlet nut here or the yoke retainer, also known on this particular model as an ACD. And when I open this up, I expose the inlet to the first stage and now take a look at what I see. What you're looking at is corrosion or dust of corrosion inside the regulator. The first stage is fully covered. This came from the dive tank. This did not develop inside the regulator. This is pretty much contamination from the dive tank. Let me spill this out so you can see what it looks like spilled out. Look at this. Look at all that corrosion. Let me knock out the filter so you can see what the filter looks like. Wow, look at that. There's still more inside. Look at that. Oh my goodness, it's still coming out. Look at all this corrosion. That's incredible. Filter is completely clogged. Look at this. Completely clogged. That's unbelievable. But it did its job. For the most part, this is just too much corrosion, too much uh, dust, corrosion dust I got through the regulator. The filter can only do so much. Let's see if there's anything else in here. You can see some remnants of that, but it was mostly contained here inside the first stage. There's still a little bit more corrosion inside there. I'm gonna try to knock this out. This regulator needs to be taken completely apart clean, give it a nice good ultrasonic bath, and then reassembled with new parts. Um, this contamination is too much. It obviously got past the first stage into the actual filter area, and it could be throughout the regulator. So I have to finish taking this apart and giving it a good ultrasonic cleaning and rebuild with new parts. Uh, but then again, this is a lot of corrosion. Keep in mind, this is not the fault of the diver. This is not the fault of the regulator. This has everything to do with the dive tank. Also, it's not the fault of the brand or the model. Notice I haven't mentioned brand. I haven't mentioned model because it has nothing to do with either of those. This has everything to do with the dive tank the diver was using. Just to give you a little history, this was a rental tank and it was a rental tank from outside of the country. The diver was not diving locally. He was not in the Keys. Uh, he was actually out of the country uh, diving, I believe it was on a liveaboard. So this is something uh, that has to be taken care of. I believe he did alert the operator to let them know that there have possible corrosion in their dive tanks and must 
take care of it. This is a lot of uh, oxidation or powder or, uh, or dust from a dive tank. Um, this is not healthy. This is not good for the regulator. It's not good for the diver. And obviously, it's not good for the dive tank. So this is going to have to be totally disassembled and cleaned and rebuilt with new parts. But that's a lot. That's a lot of actual dust. I couldn't believe when, it, when I saw this. This is, I'm still knocking some of it out. Okay, guys. This is a actual dive tank I had just cut for teaching purposes with a tank valve. Now, when you turn this upside down, you can see the dip tube on the tank valve. That dip tube is designed to avoid that kind of corrosion from getting into the valve and into the actual regulator. The idea here is if there's corrosion inside the tank, whether it be rust on a steel tank, whether it be oxidation powder from an aluminum tank. By the way, this was an aluminum tank. That's obvious oxidation powder from an aluminum tank. The idea, if the diver inverts, any kind of loose particles that are inside the tank will fall and collect around this area of the actual tank. And the dip tube is such a small target that hopefully we don't get anything inside the dip tube into the valve into the diver. For this amount of corrosion to end up through the valve into the diver's regulator, this whole area had to be covered above the dip tube for that to happen. If you look at the dip tube, it's a very small target for any kind of corrosion to end there up inside. However, this is very fine powder, so there had to be a large amount of powder for it to find its way into that tiny little dip tube all the way through the valve and to the diver. Unbelievable, but it has happened. Uh, this is not the first time I see this happen. This is actually the second time I see this happen. And now, the main cause is going to be the corrosion that's inside the actual dive tank the diver is using. Unfortunately, to get to that level of corrosion inside an actual dive tank, it had to go a long time between inspections. Annual inspections are required for the consumer's dive tanks. What is recommended for rental tanks from a dive operator, at least every six months, you should be inspecting uh, the rental fleet of tanks. Because um, corrosion can get away from you, it can accelerate rather quickly. So uh, unfortunately, this this particular tank that was being used by this diver had, was not inspected every six months. I don't think it was inspected even in 12 months. This is a very high level of corrosion to occur and to gather so much inside the tank that it can get through the dip tube in a 12-month period. If this dive operator would have inspected his tanks every 12 months, and possibly every six months, they would have caught this a lot sooner and it wouldn't have gotten to this degree. Guys, this is a very important lesson for why we do visual inspections on your private tanks every 12 months. If you go two or three years without doing an inspection on your tank, anything can happen, anything can develop inside that dive tank. So keep that in mind. This is a very good lesson for that purpose, if anything. All right, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions about this, please leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a like. That gives me the motivation to keep making you guys videos and keep things going. Anyway, again, thanks for watching.